This is crazy. But is it legit? Is it real? That's what everybody's asking in regards to Russell Brand, one of the biggest content creators on the internet right now, especially when it comes to this whole red pill movement, truth seekers trying to uncover what's going on in the world and expose what these elitist organizations and entities are doing to keep people enslaved, so on and so forth. Russell Brand is one of the champion voices of that whole movement right now. What's been really interesting is he's actually been communicating more and more of an interest in Jesus. And so for me as a pastor, as a Christian content creator, I can't help but comment on what he posted recently. He just came out saying that he was going to get baptized. And I think he just got baptized. And so we're going to see this video from him explaining what that experience was like. But I want you to stick through this because here's where it gets kind of concerning for me, if I can be completely honest. Shortly after seeing this news about him announcing he was getting baptized and then getting baptized, he put out another video that made me extremely wary of where he's at spiritually, and it's something that you need to be paying attention to as well. And uh, I think it's actually, there could be a major demonic element to what's happening here. I don't say that lightly. So stick around to the end, but without further ado, let's listen to what Russell Brand has to say about his experience getting baptized. taken many many substances and always been disappointed with their inability to deliver the kind of tranquility and peace and even transcendence that I always felt I've been looking for something occurred in the process of baptism that was incredible overwhelming literally overwhelming because I was obviously underwater and it was the river Thames at some points so I felt changed, transitioned. Now, of course, even though it's been less than 24 hours in the interim period, I've already felt like sort of irritation. I've got three children. I've got a job. I've got challenges. I still live in the world. But I feel as if some new resource within me has switched on. So many of your comments have been so beautiful and encouraging, and I really appreciate it. And also even the cynicism, I understand, because some people will just see me as a celebrity. I don't see me as a celebrity because I was me when I was a little boy. I was me when I was a junkie. I was me when I was poor. I've been me in all of the different phases. But I recognize that anything in this terrain, in the sort of social media world, could be exploited and utilized. For me, I've made the decision and I know what the decision is. I've made it for myself and I pray that it, it will be relevant to my family, in particular, my children. My wife's Catholic, you know, she's already made her own choices in this life, including this one. This is new for me. I'm learning and I will make mistakes, but this is my path now. And I already feel incredibly blessed, relieved, nourished, held, it's been an incredible experience. I wish I could tell you exactly about it because there were amazing individuals involved. There were incredible and bizarre incidents that took place that felt serendipitous and laden. You know, I do a show every day. I'll be talking about this stuff in the show because it's part of my mission and it's part of my ministry and it's part of my service. This is new to me and it's a joy to me. And I know that I'm not expected to be perfect and I know that that's not something I'll be able to deliver. Those of you that have embraced me, I'm so grateful. I can't tell you how happy I feel and how relieved I feel. But as you know, if you know, my resources are coming from somewhere else and someone else now. Thank you so much for your support. Let's keep doing. So first of all, I mean, everything that he's saying there, that sounds amazing. And there's a lot of truth to what he's saying. I mean, so what is baptism? You might be even wondering, okay, so you've seen pictures of people going underwater and coming out, out of the water. What does that mean? Well, as a Christian, what that means is you are identifying by faith with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Son of God comes to planet Earth, lives the sinless, blameless life that you and I could never live, dies on a cross for our sin. He goes and pays the penalty for our sin on our behalf, and then is put in a tomb, and on the third day, this is what makes him so remarkable and the point of our worship as Christians, he didn't stay dead. He rose himself from the grave by the power of the Holy Spirit, proving that he is, in fact, the Son of God, and he holds the keys of eternal life to whoever would just put their faith in him and believe in him and turn from their sin and follow him. And so going under the water is this symbolic, I would say more than symbolic, it's a spiritual response 
to what Jesus has done for us. The Bible says in 1 Peter that baptism is the response of a good conscience towards God. That when Jesus goes into the grave and comes out of that grave uh, in the resurrection, that's what we're identifying with. We're identifying with the crucifixion of Jesus. We're denying ourselves. We are, we are dying to our old lives, and we are coming out of that water, essentially that grave, a new creation. The Bible calls this being born again. When you're changed, he literally changes you. It's not about joining a religion. It's about actually having an encounter with God that changes your life. And so when he talks about this supernatural experience, even there's going to be cynical Christians that say, well, is that really real? Or was it just goosebumps? There should be some sort of occurrence that happens, and it's going to be different for different people, but you're going to experience the peace of God. If you don't experience the peace of God when you get baptized, something is very wrong with you. And so here I here we are hearing that he's had this amazing experience, and honestly, he's being a little bit cryptic about why he made these, why he made that decision. Why was he going and getting baptized? He's, you know, making acknowledgement that he's following God, but What's his understanding of who God is? I'm not here to judge where he's at. I want to believe the best. I want to believe that he's maybe an immature believer trying to figure out how to communicate these things. But nevertheless, he made a a public decision to confess his faith in Jesus by going into that water and coming back out. That's a big thing about what baptism is. It's about a public confession and a washing away of your old life. So I want to make that clear because the last thing I want to do is judge a man like this as motives. In fact, I think with what he said about is he, he's a celebrity and so often we just think, well, if they're a celebrity, it must not be real. They must be doing it for publicity. There's a, there's a lot of things you could do to get publicity beyond like putting on the air of being a Christian. In fact, in today's day and age, talking about being a Christian or what or your faith, it's more likely going to lose you influence with the world than gain you influence. So I want to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But I did see another video after this baptism one, which made me very concerned. And I want you to see this because there's things that he's still dabbling with, it appears, that are demonic in nature. Okay. First of all, before we get to this next video, let me know in the comments what you think about this. What do you think that this is legit? Is this is something that is this something that we should celebrate? How do we take this? Um, you guys have heard my thoughts. I want to err on the side of grace. I'm not saying go and follow him and make him your pastor, but I am saying as a brother in Christ, we got to cheer on people like this that are making these public declarations. But then we just see this video of Russell Brand going and talking about this was just a day ago that he posted this. Tarot cards. Tarot cards? Christianity? Is there a blend there? Maybe you're someone who's given your life to Jesus or is interested in Jesus, but you're still into stuff of the new age. I want you to listen to what he says here, and then I'll give my commentary. Can't be good news, can it? Oh, it's the old kidnapped and held hostage by some railings card. That's good. That means you are going to get a new puppy. Like, it's not going to be that, is it? Well, actually, we've looked into it, and this symbolizes, this card is called the Eight of Swords. And it symbolizes feeling trapped and restricted, perhaps by your own convictions, self-imposed barriers that can be shed with an open mind. Do you feel trapped? Are you in a state of anxiety and fear? And can you remove the blindfold to become free? I'm interested, I suppose, in the intuitive reactions one might have to tarot, particularly as I move into a more clearly delineated spiritual space with a more clearly ordained path, i.e. a lot of Christians would say that tarot and even yoga is a kind of heresy. What's your personal view on that? Do you still use stuff like this and the I Ching? Do you still look out for symbols and signs as you move further down a particular pathway? One thing for sure that when you get something like that it does serve as a tool for reflection and personal analysis because yeah I do feel that if I remove the blindfold or let the scales fall from my eyes I would see more clearly what the path is you know I read today, I think on Hallo, and you know it's a, an app that I use for meditation it's absolutely beautiful that if you focus on God that is all you have to do 
God will do everything else. Now, you hear stuff like that, and it sort of makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? And you think, well, all right, so what am I actually worried about now? I'm worried about this attack. I'm worried about this aspect of my family life. Okay, so I'm going to pause it there, because I, I think we got the meat of what he's trying to say. The question that he's asking is, if you've given your life to Jesus, if you're following God, is it appropriate for you to be engaging in some of these other New Age tactics, customs, traditions, is it okay or is it heresy? So here's what I would tell you right away. This guy, he reminds me so much of when I first gave my life to Jesus because I came out of the new age movement. I came out of all of this sort of stuff and I was genuinely trying to look at like, okay, like maybe there's something redemptive about all of these things. Maybe there's something that I can still gain from what I was doing in the past. So before we go and throw stones at a guy like this, let's acknowledge that the homie just he just got saved if he got saved. He's new in this thing. He just got baptized. He's just starting to learn how to read the Bible. He's just starting to go through biblical devotionals. And I'm not familiar with the Hallow app. I, I'm, I, my understanding is that it's Catholic, maybe in more nature. And I'm not trying to, we don't have to talk about that in this episode. But the point is, is that the Holy Spirit is clearly doing a work in this guy's heart. The Holy Spirit is clearly leading him along. But here's the challenge. The challenge is, is that you have a guy like this, and he seems like he's coming from a very humble place, but he's still got a ton of influence. And so as he's exploring this new world of spirituality, here's my encouragement to you. My encouragement to you is you might be excited about a new celebrity or an influencer that seemed like they were super far off from God. Now they're going hard after God. You, you got to make sure, though, that you're not putting any person on a pedestal because we are all growing in our knowledge of the Lord. And you got to make sure that you're going directly to the source first. You're going directly to God's word and you're seeking out truth according to what he says for yourself. The Bible even says in First John that none of you even need teachers. Teachers are good. Teachers are gifts to the body of Christ. Don't get me wrong. But the Bible specifically says that you need not a teacher because the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. What does that mean? It means you need to take responsibility for your own spiritual life. You can't just be taking what people like this or even people like this are saying at face value without going into what the word of God says. Because let me share with some scripture with you to kind of illustrate this point about specifically why the tarot card thing is like super whack. But then the final video I'm going to share with you at the end of this, it's going to put the nail in the coffin for you. But this is what it says in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses two through four. It says, thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the Gentiles are dismayed at them for the customs of the peoples are futile for one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax, they decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's talking about these idols that these people, these pagan worshipers would create. Tarot cards are a form of idolatry, okay? This is like, this is textbook idolatry. You're taking these cards and you're using these cards in a mystical fashion, in a randomized fashion, hopefully serendipitously a card. I don't even know how the whole thing works, frankly. Just don't mess with this stuff because the Bible specifically says, do not engage in these pagan customs, in these pagan rituals. Because the devil uses this type of stuff to lure people away from the gospel. This is what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay, Tarot cards, textbook, doctrine of demons. Like people use this stuff, they don't they don't understand the types of doors that they're opening up in their lives. And this is why I want to show you this final video. This this young lady who is deep into the occult and doing tarot cards and stuff like this. She goes on, I found this video on TikTok, but you're gonna find tons of content from people who came out of the occult, came out of doing that sort of stuff, expose this stuff for what it really is. So listen to what she has to say here. Today I gave up my tarot cards. One day I woke up, I was surrounded by demons. Can you start off by introducing yourself? Oh, my name is Demira. How old are you? 
I'm 20. Subconsciously, like, we've always been trying to, like, search for the truth. I just, like, recently realized that, like, these tarot decks, like, even if, like, the art is pretty, like, you really don't know, like, the intention behind, like, the artist. I've recently, like, learned about what altars, like, actually, like, represent. Every time I get visions of demons, they're always messing with my altars, like, in my room. One of them was my tarot decks. One day I woke up, I was surrounded by demons, and they were speaking Latin to me because I started speaking speaking Latin and I Google translated it and it said demon devil burn the house tarot cards are super demonic and a lot of people don't understand how demonic tarot cards are a lot of people seem to think that tarot cards aren't demonic because when you do tarot cards they tell you something truthful about your life what tarot cards would do they would use familiar spirits which are demonic like people that passed away ancestors and sp spirits like that to be able to try to come up with scenarios and situations in your life to make it seem like this is real but what tarot cards readers don't tell you is that they're actually using demonic powers do not not operate in tarot cards because when you operate in tarot, tarot cards, you're literally allowing so many demonic spirits into your life to destroy your life. Today I gave up. My so I don't even know who, who the homie G is at the end of that, but he's a hundred percent right. When people and psychics use these tarot cards, and it seems like they got like crazy unknown supernatural revelation of something going on in your family, a loved one that passed away. You know what they're tapping into? They're tapping into a network of demons that are able, they've been around for the, since the beginning of time. These are eternal beings, spirits, literal spirits that are able to like see, they, they are able to communicate with each other and they're able to communicate this information about who you are and who is your grandma and all that sort of stuff. And then you hear a psychic talk about this stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, like this person knows so much about me. You know what all this is? It's a counterfeit of what God does. Everything that the devil does, he's not creative. He counterfeits everything that belongs in God's kingdom. How does this operate in God's kingdom? Kingdom. This is what we call the gift of the word of knowledge. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God gives you his spirit. You hear directly from him. You could be ministering to someone. God gives you a download of something that that person, that there's no way that you would know that that person was dealing with that thing or came from that thing or, or whatever, or was related to that person. You bring them that word of knowledge. And what does that do? When they hear you say that without any sort of rapport, they're like, oh my gosh, this person actually hears from God. This builds a bridge for the truth of the gospel to travel over, for the truth of prophecy to travel over. This is the truth. This is how God intended for us to operate in the supernatural. And the devil is going to use every other mean to we to, to, to wean people off of the word of God and into these other things, which will ultimately destroy them. So here's what I want to tell you. First and foremost, ditch the tarot cards. Do what they did in Acts chapter 17. Take that jaunt, put it outside, burn that thing. Burn anything that you have that's occultic. Get rid of it. Don't try to sell it. Burn it up. You don't want to have any open doors to the demonic in your life. And the second and final thing, make sure that you're doing this. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, this is what it says in verse 16. Take heed to yourself... And to the doctrine, continue in them for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So to summarize, am I excited about Russell Brand getting baptized? 100%. Do we want to make sure that he really understands what he's getting into? Absolutely. But we're not going to get there by condemning a guy like this. We get there by praying for a guy like this and also taking heed to our own soul. You are responsible for your own spiritual walk, okay? You're not going to be able to stand on judgment day and say, but Russell Brand told me that, that tarot cards were okay. No, you have access to the same God of the universe that I do, that he does, and you, need, you and I both need to take responsibility for reading the word of God, understanding the word of God, being conformed, or should I say transformed by the renewing of our mind and rejecting being conformed to the patterns of this world. Amen. So again, let's celebrate this guy, but let's also be be careful because a guy like this is still new in his faith and he's sharing things right now that aren't going to be helpful for you. Make sure that you're going to your, to the source yourself 
The source is Jesus, by the way, not the universe. So go to Jesus yourself, read the word, meditate in the word, be transformed. And if you're looking for clarity, you're here, you're seeing this video now, you're curious, where do you stand in your relationship with God? I have another video at the end of this one that's going to help you understand how to get in right relationship with God so you don't need to go to hell, which most people will go to, to if you didn't know. You can get to spend eternity in heaven with God and all of God's people. Click that video to learn more. And I have another video to teach you a little bit about demons and how do you actually overcome demons because God actually wants you to have authority over the devil in Jesus name. Amen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.